Good morning guys, welcome. I guess you can consider that kind of a close call. You see the top of the tree about 15 feet from the excavator, which is where the excavator was parked and I was sitting in it when that thing fell, but been doing this long enough, you kind of get uh, an idea of where it's gonna land as you're watching it come down. Uh, if I had it backed up, it definitely would have got me. The reason why we took this tree out was because it had a nice bow to it and it bowed over this house and that wasn't anything that the homeowner wanted but uh, we used a 40,000 pound pole rope on it we had to do some clearing with the lift trying to get access but we're going to cut the logs up pack it through that little gate i'm going to move the uh, 5500 pack the logs down this driveway and we're going to use the logs as it's not going to be a long-term plan but take these logs down here and use them for somewhat of a retaining wall i'm running the uh the little X today. We don't have the big 080 on this job. This is a uh, uh, 12,000 pound mini X. Got a valve rotating grapple on it. It's an awesome setup. If you're just getting into, you know, the tree work kind of business, an excavator and a skid steer are the proper setup. This, uh, I think the, the 12s on this job as well. So I'm gonna start getting these things shoveled out of the way. Cut them into lengths that are, they're not saw log lengths because we're literally just gonna be packing them and leaving them on this job because uh, they're just not worth it to haul these little guys out of here. Cut them into length, something that I can pick up with the little X, drag these out of there. The little X is actually, that's what we just started actually calling it, um, it's actually a really awesome little setup, but the biggest thing is it's not very flexible. It can't lift very high with uh, that big of a drop on the grapple, so you get in weird spots and It'd be like if you could only lift your shoulder up halfway. But obviously, since we have the little X there, I'm going to try and clear a path so Dad can continue cutting and bucking up this log. Don't ask me how it happened, but I'm always the one in the excavator, and he's always the one running the saw. I'll hop out and uh, help him limb stuff up, but for the most part, this little, um, what do you call it? Just everything, how we got it rolling, works out good. The little system that we have. So here we go, we're gonna start dragging these suckers down the driveway. And this is in a rather, not a very good spot, but it's kind of difficult to get a trailer down here. That hill coming down um, off this little side road is pretty dang steep, so you gotta be very careful. And the main reason I'm putting these logs here is because it's actually a rental house. So people will back down this driveway because there's not a lot of room to turn around up there. and they've been known to back up and fall off of this but i'm going to shut up for a second here so you guys can hear the uh, little x grunting the butt cut log We got the 12 in this job. Well, we got the 12 here for a reason. To grind up all the slash from all the stuff that we've been cutting down. Cuts down the uh, job time by quite a bit and it's a lot easier than throwing it to the chipper by hand. Now he's exploring the back 40, going down by bridge. Trying to do my part and put the fence back up. We uh, actually, we didn't even have to do it, but I figured it's kind of fun to do a little technical stuff with the grapple. Uh, if you're concerned or curious or whatever about the clunking of the grapple, log grapples, they always tend to do that. Even if you grease them daily, which we always have, but this is original grapple for this machine and it's ran that grapple about 90% of its life and the machine's got over 3,000 hours on it. 
The machine itself is still very tight and I would consider it in great shape, but the grapples, even the younger one on the 080 um, with 15, 1700 hours on it, it clunks like that too. I just wanted to clear that up, but we are actually about wrapped up on this job. It's simple. I just tracked the little X up the road there. That's a smaller machine. It's a 12K rig. Tracked it up this steep hill so that I don't have to tow up this nasty thing. I can tow up it, but get stuck with a car, somebody coming down the road and getting a dumb spot. Just easier to track up to the top. Run down here, show you guys the finished product, what we did with the logs. And uh, I didn't really capture too much in the beginning of the tree location. A couple things that he had to work with to follow that tricky sucker. First foremost, you guys saw, or I already mentioned it, that it was leaning back over the house. It had all the limb weight and everything, so we put that big pole rope in it. And we are going to follow it. I had her set up two days ago, but it just been so windy, so we just waited and waited. And uh, yesterday, almost quitting time, we were going to follow it, and wind picked up even worse than ever. So decided to come back, spend an hour or two, get her done today. Well, it's there's no wind at all, so it's perfect. This is the driveway. This the lady owns it, rents this house out, and she has trouble with tenants backing up over this little hill. And I don't know if they ever made it down there. They just get stuck. So she wanted the logs put here. Dug a ditch with the excavator yesterday. Had the bucket here. And I stacked all the logs in it. So hopefully that's kind of a curb stop. I, don't, I feel like a little car would probably hit their bumper on it. But at least they're not falling over down there. A pickup, you'd definitely back up to it and get stopped. Hey, buddies. Hey, Emma. Oh, man. Oh, Emma. Emma, Emma. Hey, bro. Here's a stump. All encaged with both these oaks. So he went up there with the lift. Opened her up so that it had a clean shot. I took that fence down. Worried about the butt landing hitting that and then pushing over the wires but just landed stopped and stayed there funny you guys comment on the videos first person view and all that well i just watched it i'm the first person to view it but i'm glad that that drone footage played out because i was kind of in a hurry that morning got there that dji drone is so nice it's easy just throw it up and it's good to go and it gave a good perspective on where that tree actually landed in the vicinity of me and that would be a shame local headlines, dummy gets squished by a tree because, well, he didn't have enough room or he didn't back up far enough. But all seriousness, we are safe and sound. Um, I said in the film, I have a pretty good read on where that tree will land, judging watching it fall. Uh, Dad and I end up in situations like this all the time. And if there is simply not enough room for the machine to be straight pole like that, we'll put a pulley on a tree and kick me off to the side with the excavator and... We do a lot of push and pull trees with excavators. We've been doing that for a long time. And uh, knock on wood, safe and sound, V-belt. My dad, he has fallen 200,000 plus trees and the numbers just keep going up. And he very rarely misses his mark. Pull rope, knot, jack, whatever it takes, he gets it done. He's a damn good timber faller. But uh, I like ending these videos, I'm trying to start up a thing at the end of them where I remember to install a positive note at the end, a little daily advice, um, life lesson kind of a thing. And today I want to hint on, you know, weigh your risk versus the reward. And this job we here, I think we are on it four days. We did a couple things around the house and then we started sizing up this big tree. Um, Dad went up in the canopy of those two oaks that were surrounding it. Cleared it so it had a nice good hallway to fall the tree that wasn't going to have any obstructions that might push over towards power lines, then making our risk higher. So, cleared that out, set the pole rope good and high so we know we have the good leverage to pull this thing because it was definitely um, leaning over the house a pretty noticeable amount, I will say. But we uh, getting ready to pull this sucker down and the wind picks up. 
it picked up at towards the end of that day and then the whole next day the wind was gusting pretty good but we still had plenty of stuff to do on the job so we just went and finished skirting a bunch of these trees we had the lift there the 12 there the excavator there and we even had the blue the blue articulating loader with the new brush grapple on it which I, i'll make a video on that also but uh, a lot of mechanical investment and it makes it a lot easier on dad and i for a two-man crew uh, we got a pretty good amount of stuff done it was just little knickknack stuff pruning a bunch of trees that were overgrown the house and so we we stayed busy while we we're waiting for the the wind to die down we ended up only having this big tree left with about an hour to spare towards quitting time and we we're like we could probably fall this today and get it cleaned up we probably could have but the wind was just too risky for the situation and so we opted out of doing it that day and the next day it was perfectly perfectly smooth sailing there was no wind that's kind of ironic i said smooth sailing with no wind but anyway there's no wind no chance of the tree doing something um, we didn't like because of the wind and the reward was higher we got it down and uh ended up finishing like a couple hours and we we're out of there on to the next job so that's what my end of the lesson or end of the day lesson will be is stay safe and if the reward is not quite as good for how much risk you got to take ah probably not do it sometimes you got to get risky to get the biscuit comment what you guys thought about that um tree coming down <laughs> and uh stay safe see you guys in the next one like comment subscribe later